Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures. And remember this guy, this is the Infernosaurus from Dragon Trapper's Lodge. And that's not what this video is about. If you've seen the thumbnail, you know I was either stupid enough or crazy enough or a combination of both to actually try printing their big, massive Spinodon. And the Spinodon, just like our Infernosaurus friend, is some sort of strange concoction of all sorts of other multi-limbed dinosaurs. And his head is almost as big as our Infernosaurus. Yeah, that's absolutely bonkers. But I did it. And I got it all printed. I'm going to show it off. Let's talk about his base. So you might have seen my video on, uh, what was his name, Encandriox. I believe that's what it was called, the big demon dragon. I haven't actually finished him. He's sitting right here actually waiting for his friend the Spinodon to get finished. You can see him barely fitting on the screen there. Uh, he has the same base size. I'm going to say it's probably like 120 millimeters or so, but one thing I want to point out is, thank goodness, uh, it actually was keyed ahead of time. And if you can't tell which piece is which, haha. <laughs> You can always see the logo on the bottom. Now, naturally with resin stuff, it doesn't exactly want to fit, but we've got at least a good start there, don't we? Now, I do also have to mention that once upon a time when I first printed this base, there were all sorts of other plants popping up here and there for a little bit more decorative elements. But unfortunately, I snapped them all off in the process of getting him prepped. So don't be like me in that regard. Be careful with it. The body itself consists of two big chunky pieces. You notice that there's all sorts of little holes all over the side. I have been drilling into those a little bit, starting to get them prepped and clean, uh, just especially with the resin stuff. Uh, sometimes you have a little bit start to cake in and those kinds of spots are really hard to clean. Now. One cool thing about this model that also is worth mentioning is there are a couple different options if you don't want to have an armored one, like obviously I printed, you don't have to go that route. There actually is a bare version, there is just the armored version, and then there's the one that has all these holes on the side, which is the building version. Yes, buildings. And you'll also notice that there's all these little holes up and down his back. And that's where he's going to get his spine. Hence the name Spinodon. Now, these pieces do not fit all that good yet. I am going to drill in there a little bit more. And I'll probably put some putty on there prior to actually getting it ready to paint. So you can start to see here the beginnings of our friend. Now he's actually not going to be that tall. I was kind of surprised about that. He's definitely going to be long though. His tail is actually three separate sections. If I can remember the order. Which is to be, there we go. Okay. Most of the tail itself is going to be hollow, except for the end piece, this big, massive one. But I guess if you wanted to put the tail bare and naked, you could do that. So you can see here, it is super duper long. Almost as long as our car char retirement from Lord of the Print, which should have a video up soon. We'll save that guy for later. Uh, let's see here. Those are his back legs. This is one of his front legs. Yes, there are four legs. Voila. Front ones are not hollow. They're solid. Back ones are hollowed out. And then he's got some nice little grabby claws. So yeah, he's got six limbs. Then we have the actual buildings, if you want to call them buildings, more like little observation posts. They are big enough to fit figures in. And 
And I'm not sure if I want to actually attach the roofs or not. I haven't made up my mind. It, it makes more sense, I think, to keep them off, just so that way there's space to get in there, because otherwise those models are totally getting stuck. But then there's also, you'll notice, a little slot right there where we have these magic harpoon laser blaster things, which I'm not 100% sold on. And these actually are going to face to the rear. I guess this is going to be, if you got a bunch of guys inside these, why bother with any sort of a frontal assault? And then you're going to have a second section that actually sits in front like so. The little observation post there. So you got two of those, two of the roofs. I'm not 100% sure if this is supposed to be like that with these little prongs sticking out or if that's just my printer. My screen had some weird issues all of a sudden on my Mono X because this is not going to fit on my, my little Frozen Sonic Mini. And you'll see here I, I had just about no print errors other than on this one section of the roof and they print like this. So naturally, after like a 10 hour print job, no, nope, sorry. And then you have these little decorative head bits that I'm going to attach like so. I was talking with Sparkle Trot about this guy and he was kind of surprised that there was no actual crew that is, you know, intended or printed to go inside here. And I kind of view that as a bonus because this way, I mean, obviously, most people first thought is going to be lizard men. I mean, this thing is big enough to be like a, what is this, a dread saurian or whatever it's called. It's just absolutely huge. And I cannot wait to get this sucker glued together. And then I can finally get Encandriox ready to go. I figure if I'm going to be playing around with sculpting putty and green stuff and epoxy putties and tools. I want to just get it all over and done with, with a bunch of these big guys. So give me a sec. We'll put them all together and I cannot wait to see just how massive this bad boy turns out to be. So sit tight. All right. You guys remember that Infernosaurus we had a little while ago? I just wanted to have him here for size reference. Um, along with one of the actual little dino tribe dudes from Dragon Trapper's Lodge that was part of this release. <laughs> um, just just to give you a good idea, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Now, he's not 100% completely glued. The main body is, but his sail and those buildings are not. So while our friend here is the same height as that Infernosaurus, you can see I can't even fit his whole tail on camera. It's just absolutely massive. Now that is about a 120 millimeter base that he's supposed to be sitting on. I, I don't even think, is the Dreadsaurian like from GW supposed to be this big? I mean, once he's loaded up, <laughs> it's just crazy. I mean, you're going to be able to put all sorts of dudes in there. Now, I did notice that the roofs of those little mm -hmm. howda buildings that he's got sitting on there, uh, they do fit specific buildings. So what I'm thinking is I am most likely going to, and I haven't glued them, most likely I am going to remove the little sun blaster things and then that way we can staff the back with all sorts of troops as they carry them in and I try to find oh okay I'm like looking for the wrong little notch there we go Yeah, just absolutely crazy. I have no idea. And, and the crazy, ridiculous thing is, I, I'm still like, I should print some more of this stuff. Uh, Dragon Trapper's Lodge has definitely got some of the biggest 
most redonkulous models I think I've ever come across, and I absolutely love them for that. So I'm going to be holding off, well, I held off on finishing up that big demon dragon of theirs because I really wanted to ask, have this thing finished printing so I can work on them both together at the same time. Now you'll notice there's some significant gaps there in the sail. Uh, the contact points are super duper thin and I have really, really had to drill in there to get it to where it is. But what I'm thinking is I'll probably do some like epoxy putty in between there and just to really solidify that so that it's nice and stable. Um, I am going to end up gluing all of the bases of the kind of observation decks onto it. So that way, let's take these off since it's a little bit more easier to move around. Um, but outside of all that, I mean, absolutely solid six-limbed monstrosity. And like I said earlier, you don't have to build it with the howdas. You can have it just with the sail. You can have it with or without the armor. Um, wait, no, you have to have it with the sail. It wouldn't be a spider dog. What I meant was you could have it with or without the armor. I even had it take a major, major spill, and that was the only thing. We had a little cracked off piece right there on the tip of the tail, and other than that, he has been quite sturdy. I want to show you the base, though. The base I'm a little disappointed with, despite the fact that we had those connections. And this seems to be an issue I've had with a lot of different larger prints, multi-part bases. You can see here there's some serious gaps. I'm just going to go ahead and... Woo. And I broke another little leaf off. <laughs> a surprise. Uh, I am going to go ahead and fill that in with stuff. Green stuff or some putty or something. Just to give it a nice solid foundation. But, I mean, our friend here does fit on quite well. I guess my only real criticism is I, I would have liked to have seen it a little bit taller. But I, I don't think that would have been possible. And with him carrying that howda, I don't think we really would have been able to have him go fully upright. But it would have looked really neat. But yeah, just... He is a very long model. And despite the fact that the tip of his tail is actually a solid piece and everything else is hollowed out, I, I, I gotta say it, it balances out pretty well. I mean, it's just a big, impressive centerpiece. And I think if you're going to go any sort of lizard-type focused reptile army and you have resin to spare, uh, I would absolutely recommend this wholeheartedly. Uh, but I haven't even finished printing like half the other stuff in this set, too. I, I really do got to get around to it. But I think my next big project from Dragon Trapper's Lodge is going to be the... Uh, armored snapback or whatever it was called the the big alligator turtle carrying the shack on his back That's gonna be my next big one because I think it's a same size base actually I mean Just to give you guys a I don't know if this is a fair fight, but Yeah, that's that's what we're facing up against this thing is big almost as big as a knight Yeah Definitely a fun kit from dragon Trapper's Lodge. We'll put a link down below if you've never had a chance to check out their stuff. By all means, I highly encourage you to if you are in a very brave and industrious mood and want to throw tons of resin. They have absolutely humongous piles of stuff on a monthly basis at this point now. Uh, they've really ratcheted up their production values and quantities as well as, I mean, the quality is there. Uh, minimal gaps on most of the areas that aren't going to really require a whole lot of filling other than a few specific pots, but I mean, honestly, it's an impressive looking beast and it will get painted eventually. That's part of the reason why he's kind of sub assembled here. So yeah, uh, do take a look and hopefully we will have some friends of his visiting painted shortly and I'm going to get started on actually getting this guy ready for painting. So with that said, this has been High Lord Tamerlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.